is now a new control net model that is trained especially on QR codes. I want to show you the easy workflow I used to achieve this. Sometimes it does require a bit of patience to get some good results that are easily scannable. So just be aware of that. All the codes you're seeing here are scannable with a third party app. Most of them also scan with the normal photos app on iPhone with the right distance to the screen. There's also a way to turn a code that isn't scannable, such as the one you can see here, into scannable code, like this one. However, this is even more experimental than the rest and seems to take some luck as well. I still wanted to show you the method since it could be useful to some of you. So let's get right to it. But first, some quick notes about scanning the codes. I'm mostly using the standard Photos app on my iPhone to test the codes. And here you can see a normal QR code for reference to see how snappy it is. And now I'm trying to scan one of the animations and when it's playing in full screen, it won't scan. But as soon as I reduce its size, it scans right away and it's also quite snappy. However, if we compare it to a third party app, the detection is so much better there. Just take a look for yourself. It's incredibly fast. Here's another example where it's very tricky to get the regular Photos app to detect the code while the QR scanning app again only takes a split second. I've been scanning on an older and on a fairly recent iPhone as well as an iPad and the detection seems pretty much identical across the devices. On Android there are obviously differences between the various manufacturers but you can use third-party apps as well. So keep that in mind when creating the codes like do you want the code to be able to be picked up by all devices or are you happy when only people with a good third-party app on their phone can scan them. And then especially when looking at the codes on a screen, the brightness of the screen and the surroundings matter as well, as does the distance or the size of the code. And here's a good example for this. If you point your phone at the screen, none of these codes should scan unless you're really far away or watching it on a small screen. But as soon as we reduce the size, your phone should be able to scan one or two of them. Before we get started, we won't cover everything in detail since I have a playlist about the basics of AI QR codes where you can learn a method that's slightly different to the one in this video but still produces some nice images. And there's another video that focuses on the animation of the codes which we won't cover in this video. First, I'll give you some tips about creating good QR codes. Then we'll install the new ControlNet model into our automatic 1111 which you need to have installed along with ControlNet. Then we look at which settings are needed to create some nice scannable images. And then for the highly experimental part, we'll try to improve the code's readability. Whenever you create a QR code, you want to make sure that the URL is as short as possible. So use a link shortener, such as y2u.be for YouTube videos. So now that you get the link copied, you can use one of many online QR code generators, but you should make sure that they generate the code with the error correction capability at level H, which basically means that 30% of the code can be distorted and the code will still scan. Most QR code generators should do that by default, but here I found one where you can set the level yourself and also you can set the key image size. Though I'm not sure if that is important, since they are quite low res by default, but I'm just showing you the exact workflow that gave me the best results. So we select the error correction level H. And here you can see the difference between the code at level L and level H. As you can see, there's more detail in the code at level H, but you can also try generating images with level L as I managed to get some nice images with any level. It's just that in theory, it should be easier at level H. This is the most advanced QR code generator I could find. So once you're a bit more experienced with generating AI QR codes, maybe give it a try. Besides the error correction levels, it lets you select different patterns, rotate the code, or select between many different styles. I also like that you can give it a margin, but keep in mind that some of these settings are highly experimental and may make your code less scannable before you even run it through stable diffusion. So for your first tries, I recommend using the other QR code generator that I showed you. 
to install the new control net model, we open the link from the video description and download the QR code Monsters Safe Tensors version of the model. I should add that I use the file with the CKPT ending, but the CKPT, the checkpoint files are more risky to run. So whenever you can use the Safe Tensors file. And ever since recording this tutorial, I switched and I'm not using the CKPT anymore, but I'm still getting the same good results. And you need to save the file in the control net folder under models in your stable diffusion folder. And then you also need to download the file with the YAML extension and put it in the same folder. Next, we open stable diffusion and change the sampling method to DPM++ 2M Keras and make sure that high res fix is on. You can obviously try different samplers as well. Then we scroll down and drag and drop the QR code into control net. Enable control net. We then select invert as preprocessor and QR monster as model. If you don't see the QR monster model, you need to refresh the list. Now these are the most important settings and you'll probably tweak them a lot. There's no perfect setting that I've found and the quality of your results seem to heavily depend on the stable diffusion checkpoint that you're using as well as the prompt. But I'd recommend using these values for your first tries. So we set the control weight to 1.25 and the ending step to 0.75 and see what it gives us when using a prompt asking for a video game character. I found that result was interesting and the code scans and I would just generate a few more of them. However, if you're not getting any good results, you need to tweak the values. The control weight basically decides how strong the code comes through in the final image from zero, which means no code at all, until two, which means very strong. However, that still in itself isn't a guarantee that your image can be scanned. The starting and ending control step, for the lack of a better term, determine the level of artistic creativity of the final image and you need to decrease or increase it respectively for more creativity. I'd suggest that for a start you stay in between these ranges, so for the control weight between one and two, and for the starting control step 0 to 0.2 and the ending control step between 0.7 and 0.9. Here's some salads that I thought came through quite well. Now let's assume we want to outpaint one of them to make it a widescreen image. My workflow for that is I add borders to the image manually so that I can use the inpainting in Stable Diffusion to actually outpaint the image since I just can't get the same results any other way. And I'm using a free tool which is called Earthen View to add the borders. So we open the image in Earthen View and go to image, change canvas size. We change the color of the borders to white. Now we set the width and the height of what we want our image to be embedded in. For here we're using full HD resolution and we click on apply and save the image. Which we then drag into the in painting tab under image to image. Now we mask the white area manually. We make sure to use the original prompt or one that's close to it or fits the image. We use those or similar settings. And ideally we use the inpainting version of the checkpoint that was used for the original image. Here we're getting some cool widescreen images. Now for the final part of the video, I want to remind you that this is not easily reproducible and therefore highly experimental. I only managed to do this with less than half of the images that I tried it with and I can't always reproduce it myself. However, it can be useful to you and you can get lucky too. So let's have a look. So here's our image that was created with text to image, but it's not scanning even with a good third party scanning app. So let's send it over to image to image where we will lower the CFG scale to about 13 and the denoising strength to about 0.13. Then we need to drag the QR code into ControlNet, enable it and check pixel perfect. 
we select the same preprocessor again. And here, by accident, I'm using a different QR code model than the QR monster model. In theory, both should work, but if you want to, you can download the same one I'm using here and install it the same way as the one we did earlier. For the control weight, as well as the starting and ending control step, we're using the default values that you see here. But make sure that you select control net is more important. And here we get lucky and the newly generated images become scannable, or at least some of them. If yours doesn't scan, you can repeat the process by sending the newly generated image back to image to image and just keep repeating the process over and over. So with some of the images I tried, I had no luck at all. And I think some just cannot be fixed with this method. So in my opinion, to save you the time, it's always better to have the images created through text to image, be scannable directly or tweak the settings there if they aren't so that you can create a scannable code right away. What you just saw should only be like a very last resort and just don't expect it to work. You can find the prompt that I used to successfully repair this QR code in the video description, along with all other prompts for images that you saw in this video. But if that wasn't enough for you and you want to dive in deeper into the field of repairing AI QR codes, then have a look at the QR code generator that I showed you earlier. Because it's not just a code generator, but it also lets you compare your output image with the original code. The comparison can, for example, highlight the changes in brightness and can give you an idea which areas of the image need fixing. You can also download a mask that you can use for inpainting an automatic 1111. I've not looked into it much further since I was happy with the text to image generation of the codes, but if you're interested, check out the blog entry with detailed instructions on how to repair the QR codes. I want to thank everyone that's contributed to this. And most importantly, I want to thank all of you for your support. If you're interested in how my AI voice works, the voice you're hearing right now, check out this video. And that concludes our tutorial for today. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please give me a like or subscribe and I'll see you next time.